What's up guys, Drew here. Today I am not going to be talking about anything that I haven't discussed before in other videos on my channel, but my dear friend Vicky over at Lilypad made a video a couple weeks ago, I think, where she was sort of questioning her own thoughts and ideas about deity and sort of posed the question to her fellow witches, um, just wanting to kind of hear their head noise on the topic. And since it is something that I have put a lot of thought into for many, many years, and it's something that I'm very comfortable with my position on, I guess, and that I have discussed many times, and that if I were sitting with her face to face, we'd be talking it out and I, you know, freely jibber jabbering back and forth about it. Um, I thought I'd do a video response. So here we go. <laughs> she touched on a few different topics um, in the video and I'll kind of get to those as I can go through too. But let's just start from where I sit with regards to what is deity. Now, also, I may say deity, I may say deity. I do this with lots of words where I kind of switch between. I, I typically say deity, but who knows? Like, it, sometimes it just comes out of my mouth as deity. And like I said, that happens with a lot of words, actually. But <laughs> whatever. So my entire life, I have known that there was something. And when I was young, I didn't put a word on it. I didn't put a word on it really ever. Like if discussing it with other people, I might refer to it as God, just so they would have an understanding of what I was talking about. But I knew, I knew about the Abrahamic God. And I knew that that is not what I was talking about. It is and it isn't. <laughs> I do believe that they're the same, but we'll get there. So I did not refer to it as anything really. Um, but I knew it was there. I knew it existed with every fiber of my being. And then after my illness, my initiation, and it came out, it was spirit. It was great spirit. And I just accepted that I needed, I needed a very vague spirit. I needed a very vague term because it is a vague thing. My experience and understanding of what it is, is that it's very vague. So for me, spirit I call it the nuts and bolts of creation, right? Of everything. Like the atoms and the nucleus and the matter that everything is literally made up of. The antimatter, like everything. That's my understanding of it. That everything is made from spirit, of spirit. Like everything in my body is part of my body. You can break them down into individual things, but in general, it's Drew's body even though there's a liver and there are bacteria and there are microbes and you know, whatever. So deity, angels, all of it, me, you, the grasshopper outside, the grass, the car across the street, everything is part of spirit. We are all one. We are all connected. I'm pantheistic if I didn't say that already. So my experience of personified deity is as follows. <laughs> I really feel like spirit will communicate with each and every person or group of people in a way that they understand. This explains why there are so many gods and goddesses around the world throughout time, throughout history. And again, this is just me thinking out loud, but I think it also explains why Neolithic people, for example, had a very vague deity and it got more specific as cultures became more complicated, as human beings became more complex, their gods and goddesses became more complex as well. This could be down to our ability to interpret. This could be projection. Again, we'll get there. <laughs> so to me, it makes sense, for instance, that in Celtic or Norse mythologies, their pantheons look like them. They're very similar to their people. But it also makes sense to me that, for instance, Hindu gods that look very different from their people look the way they do as well. And I think that's because Again, spirit will speak to us in any way that we can understand. So, you know, some people will be more able to relate to something very familiar, whereas some people might need to be jarred. I know my personal path has been very jarring. So many times along the way, spirit has jarred me, has made me uncomfortable, has shown me things in a way that was very jarring. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Um, to get me out of my comfort zone, to get me out of my own preconceived notions, what have you, whatever, and open me up. Different people need different things. This brings me to 
a question that she posed where she was talking about being raised with this authoritarian male, masculine god figure and moving to this more feminine goddess, intuitive, the whole thing, goddess figure. And she's questioning whether or not she did so because it's more comfortable and it feels better. That's a question for her to figure out for herself, obviously. But I think, like I just said, some people will gravitate to something that's more comfortable, whereas other people will be drawn to or interact with something that's less than comfortable, actually, because that's what we need. If you came from an experience with spirit that felt traumatic and was harmful to you in some way, or even just off-putting, that it would make sense to me personally that spirit might come to you in a way that's very comforting. Because I believe that all of these things are spirit, all gods and goddesses. So, for example, we're all, uh, Kuan Yin. Kuan Yin. Um, she is a goddess, goddess, um, in Buddhism. It, she's not really a goddess, but there's a word for it, and I always murder it when I try to say it, so I'm not gonna. Starts with a B. It's a long word. <laughs> Even when I listen to other people say it and try to say it back, do you have words like that? That's one of those words for me. <clears throat> Essentially, she could, she got to a state where she could reach Buddhahood, but decided that she wouldn't because she wanted to stay behind, as it were, for the rest of humanity and wait for them to catch up. She is a goddess of compassion and love, and she's very mothering and what have you. To me, this is one aspect of spirit. I think this is why you can look around the world and find different gods or goddesses that embody this because it is an aspect of spirit that was interpreted by a certain culture or certain people certain group i will make the comparison for me Kuan Yin is not the same but so very similar to the virgin the virgin mother mary again they're not exactly the same but they are so similar they are from the same aspect of spirit as far as I'm concerned. The details are a bit different, but if you just step back and look at the big picture, the core of what it is they do, who they are, it's the same. I would argue that this is true for many, many, many gods and goddesses. They overlap. And for me, that is because they are a, a personification, a representation of a certain aspect of the greater whole of spirit. Because if I need compassion and mothering, then I can work with this one aspect of spirit or this one aspect of spirit may come to me. People don't like it. Um, a lot of people don't care, but there are a lot of people in the world who don't like it because I believe we're all, it's all the same thing to me. It's all exactly the same thing. It's just interpreted in different ways. And so then this brings about this question you know, so did we create personified deity or did spirit create personified deity to interact with us? And honestly, I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. Either way, the same thing, it has the same outcome. We are interacting with divinity. Whether divinity decided to interact with us or we decided to interact with divinity, maybe we met in the middle. Who knows? I don't think that's the important part of it, personally. Um, maybe other people do and that's great and they can have that discussion, but I don't think that matters. It doesn't matter to my personal path. Let's put it that way. She also brought up the question of morals and like, where does that come from? Where do we think that comes from? Um, she posed the question. She wondered, you know, is it nature or nurture basically? I think that that is, uh, for me, existence is such a layered thing. It's like, for instance, I do not believe that time is linear. I mean, well, we know time isn't linear. We experience it as linear. But really, all is now. Everything is happening right now. Things that we view as past, things that will be happening in the future, there is no, or they're disjointed and all over the place. There is no linear timeline. Um, it's just our experience of time that makes it seem linear. It's the way we process things that makes it seem like it's linear. Just like our brain can't process everything our eyes see. It processes what it can, and that's what we interpret and understand and see around us, even though there's actually more there. Think about how complicated a human being is, or a cat, or a microbe, okay? How complicated is all of existence? Back to the morals, <laughs> back to morals. There are so many things that can go into this. I mean, 
as a human being in the human being experience, you may suffer a mental illness that impedes your ability to understand right and wrong the way that a normal, your average human being might. You know, there's cultural, there's familial, there's all these influences, but there, there's a lot of stuff just going on within an individual. Maybe you don't have a conscience. You're a sociopath or a psychopath or, you know, I mean, there's so many things with the brain and the human condition that go into this moral issue. So setting that aside, I think that we all have this connection or this ability to connect. And through this connection, we can get this moral, ethical sense of right and wrong. But we can also suppress that and ignore it. Um, I say I believe it comes from connection because, for instance, my mother was a whore, she lied all the time. I remember as a child watching my mother lie or my mother making me lie for her. She did that too. And how wrong I knew that was and how uncomfortable it made me. And no one had to tell me that it was wrong. It just felt wrong. Again, I'm not gonna say that everybody has this. And I personally, because of my spiritual path, have to believe that it comes from my connection to spirit, that that's where that comes from. But again, I think it could be much more complicated than that. I'm not going to say that I haven't done morally gray things or I haven't done bad things. I'm not even going to say that. But for the most part, I have a moral compass. And for me, my moral compass only got stronger when I, for me, when, when I had my initiation, when I got pneumonia and almost died and came out the other side. Like certain things slid into place and solidified and I looked at the world differently than I had before. But I always had, you know, I was always leaning in this moral compass kind of way. Like I always knew, even when I did things that were, that, that, that I would today say, oh, that was wrong. I knew, I felt the same way at the time. I just didn't care, I did it anyway. <laughs> and I absolutely believe that that was ingrained in me from like at least toddlerhood for as long as I can remember and my earliest memories I was three so it's always been there I have to think it's related to spirit but again it could get more complicated than that I don't know how things work outside of this plane and I could see that there could be consciousness outside of the physical body and that you know maybe we do decide to come here and live these lives and maybe we sort of I, I, for lack of better words, sign contracts. You know, we set up things. This is the kind of person I'm going to be and these are the things I'm going to do so that I evolve as a spirit. So that this, so that the aspect of spirit that dwells within will evolve in such, in such way. I don't know. I mean, I, I genuinely don't know, but I can see that sort of thing being one layer of existence. And so thus, that could be why, why my morals are as they are in this lifetime. But again, to me, that still goes back to spirit. It all does. I don't know. I can't separate it. Everything does. For me, everything is 100% sacred. I've said it before, but this plastic pen is sacred. It's made from the stuff of spirit. Like it wouldn't exist without it. Having said that, just because we're having this, uh, this conversation in the community right now about you know, sort of environmental issues. Just because something is sacred doesn't mean I like it or that I think it's good. <laughs> Everything is sacred. So I can look at things throughout history that have happened that are just horrible, but I can see the higher good in the situation and I'm not even gonna get into all of that. But my point is that just because something is sacred doesn't mean like I should surround myself with plastic because plastic is sacred. No, everything is sacred. It, what it means is that I should handle plastic in a loving, respectful way that honors spirit in every action I do. And one of the ways we do that is recycling or repurposing or, you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, <laughs> off topic, back, back to the topic at hand. <laughs> I personally have not worked overly much with personified deity, but having said that, what I just talked about was a lesson that was given to me by a personified deity. Um, I've talked about it on my channel before, uh, one of my witchy tail videos, the blue monkey god, I talk about how Hanuman popped into my life and he taught me the lesson that spirit is in everything. Everything is sacred. Everything deserves respect and love and that there is a higher perspective to be taken. Um, not just 
he taught me this about physical items, but it reminded me that everything, you know, situations, ideas, people, beliefs, you know, all of these things can be looked at from a respectful, loving standpoint. It's not always easy to do when you're here on this earth plane, but um, it's a powerful lesson. But again, I haven't really worked overly much with personified deity personally. I usually just work with spirit, but I've actually been being called, I think, to work more with personified deity. I've definitely worked with the ancestors, which is an aspect of spirit. Um, I definitely work with the spirits of the land and I've been being called to work more with the spirits. But I, for some reason, I think this is including personified deity. Again, to me, ancestors, um, divic energy, the fae, spirits of the land, um, angels and guides and deity, the whole thing, to me, it's, it's all spirit. It's just different aspects and it's expressed in different ways and it's more personalized. Obviously, divic energies are, are like, you know, natural nature type, whereas guides are more personal to an individual, whereas ancestors are um, spirits that have actually lived in the flesh, that is aspects of spirit that understand what it is to be in a body on this planet. And, you know, I mean, for me personally, it's very complicated and very simple at the same time. All of existence is a paradox as far as I'm concerned. Um, it, anything that you can say is true, you can say the opposite is true. And like, as above, so below kind of thing. It's a mirror. Um, and so there's this large picture that can be pinpointed into something very small, but it's still a reflection of, in its tiny state, that giant massive state. Okay. <laughs> I guess I've rambled about this topic enough. I mean, this is the kind of thing I can talk about all day long, especially if I have someone to bounce off of and we're going back and forth, don't get me started. But essentially at the end of the day, I think that it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, what deities you work with, or if you don't work with them, if they're masculine or feminine, um, if they're, you know, lovey-dovey or warriors, Whatever. I don't think that that really matters in the grand scheme. I think on a personal level, in the microcosm, it matters because it is what's best for each individual at any given time. And I think this can evolve and change. And I kind of feel like it should because that shows that we as individuals are evolving and changing. And um, we should always question everything just because we have this beautiful brain that can question and that can only lead us into deeper levels of understanding the self, if nothing else. But I don't think that in these questions, there is one answer. If there is one answer, it's a very vague answer. We each have our own specific answers in these situations because we each need what we need. And that might align with other people. There may be whole groups of people but it's still very tailored to the individual and that individual's path and what they need and on a human level, on a soul level, on every level. So as far as deity goes, as far as spirit goes, personally, I don't think there's a wrong answer. Because even if I have an experience that I consider to be unpleasant or un like it just seemed like a waste of time or something like that, then obviously I am not getting it. And I need to look deeper into it and look more at it because you get something out of ev everything. I do. I don't know. Um, sometimes I have to hunt for it and try to figure out what it was. But I get something out of every situation. I grow. I change. I evolve. Something that is ultimately of benefit and beautiful comes out of every situation I find myself in. And I have never personally had personified deity or a guide or an angel or anything come to me and me not get something out of it, even if they only stayed for a second, a second, you know, whatever, <laughs> a very brief period of time. I think that's what matters. For me personally, I don't need to have a set right answer. My answer is that no matter what happens, what I experience, who I work with, whom comes to me or who I seek out, it is in my highest good. And that's the highest good of all because I am connected to everything. And that might seem wishy-washy to people, there may be people who, are, who think that that's un, uh, like I'm uncommitted or it's just lost in the clouds and airy fairy, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> because for me, it's like 
floating in an ocean. Sit there long enough and just be with the ocean, eventually you're gonna lose yourself and become part of it. That is my relationship with spirit, with divinity. Not that I walk around in that state all day, every day, but I've been in that state, I can get in that state, I know that state. So even when I am walking, you know, fully in my Drewness, walking around cleaning the house, I still know, I'm still tethered to that place. It's still there. And I just don't need it to be super specific. This is why I'm struggling with the topic at the moment, because I do feel that I'm being called to work with persona, a personified deity. And I don't really know how to go about that because I don't want to seek one out. I've never, like, anytime I've had a super powerful experience with personified deity, they've come to me. And they actually rarely stick around very long. It's usually... I don't know, uh, anywhere from a day to a couple weeks. So I don't, I'm thinking that I'll just sort of put my feelers out and do some maybe journey or astral work or um, even meditation, I don't know, and see what happens because I really feel like someone is calling me, but I have no idea who that is. And I'm actually really excited to find out because again, I've ha I typically have very powerful experiences, life altering, even if it's just a little bit with personified deity. But I'm never going to be one of those witches that, well, every time I say never, <laughs> never say never because it always happens. Um, I just, I genuinely don't feel like I could ever be a devotee and, you know, dedicate myself to a god or a goddess. That's not the relationship that I have with them. They're like family. They're like brothers and sisters. I love them dearly. Yeah, I don't know. There are a lot of things about other people's practices and interaction with deity in particular that I don't, I don't understand, but I understand, if that makes sense. Like, really, I can't really wrap my head around it exactly, but in my heart, like, I, I understand. I know that that is their path and that it is doing for them the same thing that mine is doing for me. And I personally can't help but think that that's anything other than beautiful. This video is so long. Ooh. Um, I'm going to stop talking because holy moly. <laughs> All right, guys, I really could talk about this for ages and ages and ages. So I'm just going to stop because more will just keep coming out of my mouth. Thank you so much for watching if you stuck around this long. And Miss Lilypad, thank you for posing the topic. I love to talk about this kind of stuff. I wish that we could sit down face to face and talk about it. We're actually not that far away from each other. So maybe one day we can, but yeah, I'm done until next time. Much love and gratitude.